a specialist you know, here? Yeah, is a specialist thank here? You thank you for welcome. inviting me. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to your house. I have been looking forward to this insight the whole time. Insight, a deeper appreciation for something or someone. So, what is your name and where are you from? First of all, welcome to my house. And my name is Alia and I am actually multicultured because my mom is from El Salvador, which is in uh, Central America, and my dad is from Jordan. I was born in the States, raised in, in here in Saudi, and married to a Saudi right now. I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> Multicultural. All right, Miss Alia, can I call you Miss Alia? Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. All right, go so I got, I got tons of questions for you. Go ahead. First question, what's your favorite color? Pink. And what's your favorite day of the week? Wednesday. Really? Why Wednesday? Because uh, you're still not weekend, and you're still not like in the middle of between like the middle of the week so I just love that. I love it, I love it, I love it. Alright, next question. If I gave you one million dollars, what would you do with it? Oh, who is this? <laughs> who is this? This is my other half, my sweetheart. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Oh, my name is Saeed. Oh, well, thank, thank you. Yeah. Welcome to, thank you for joining your wife at Insight. Okay, alright, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So if I gave you a million dollars, what would you do with the money? Uh, I will do half of it, give it to charity, and half of it do it in a business to invest it so it, I can rerun the money and be able to help others later on in the future. Uh, what is your guilty pleasure if you have any? Dancing. I dance till I drop. So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> any particular type of dance? Salsa, merengue? Uh, salsa. I do salsa and I actually learned it professionally. So, yes, I love salsa. Name one person, either alive or dead, that you would like to meet. Uh, Maya Angelou. I would like to meet her. Why Maya Angelou? Because she was a very famous poet and she had a lot of wisdom to say. So, I really love her. All right, Alia. What if I gave you one superpower? What would that superpower be and why? I would like to read people's minds and so I can understand how to fix them better. I like that, I like that. Uh, sir, what, uh, what is that? Oh, that's, that's a nice food. Who made the food? <laughs> she made it, she did a good job. Oh, she's a really good oh, cook? Yeah. she's really good. What's the fav, what, is, of all the things that she cooks, what's your favorite dish that you love that she cooks? I cannot say one, you know. Okay, give me more than one, more than one. A lot, you know. He married the first, me for the food. Okay, <laughs> the first is the the kapsa. Okay. A very good one. And uh, mansef is one of the best. Okay. And she do a lot of things, you know. I mean, things, you know, sometimes I don't know what what you call it. <laughs> a way to a man's heart. Is through his stomach. I love it. I love it. I love and it. That's why no, he married me, no, right? You married me because of no, food. But I, like, <laughs> I like the way she got into my brain. Okay, brain. See, yeah. brain, heart. Yeah. Very. You're brainy. I yeah, love it. Yeah. We're gonna talk more about that. We're gonna talk more about that. All right, sir. What is your name? I'm sorry. I, I kept saying okay. Alia's name, and I'm rude. I didn't mean to be rude, sir. Your name? Okay. Uh, my name is Saeed. Alamudi. Saeed. How did you learn English? Oh, you know, um, I went to the states. You know, with knowing nothing about English. I started, you know, like with the English classes. And um, then, you know, it grew up like, okay, well, I went out, you know, and knowing people, having friends, and uh, believing in yourself, you know, and be brave that to talk, you know, doing mistake is not the end of the world, you know, you have to like, okay, we'll do mistake, we'll learn from it, and then um, you will do better in the future. I love it. I love the fact how you said, be brave. I love the fact oh, how yeah. you said, don't make mistakes. So, so, so important. One last question for you. Okay. What is your favorite word in English if you have one? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Why perfect? I love it, you know, because it, like, it should, I, I don't know, but I feel like it's, um, it's completed, you know, it's just describe something. I love it. Thank you. All right. So listen, um, you were born here. I was born in the States. You were born in the States. Okay. So. When did you move from the States to Saudi Arabia? When I was three. Great. So here's the question. Mm -hmm. 
How did you learn English? Because I think you're bilingual, right? I'm trilingual. Trilingual. Okay, yes, give me trilingual. the three languages. Arabic, English, and Spanish. All right. Espoquito, <laughs> Espanol. All right. How did you learn English? Well, both my mom and dad speak different languages, and the only common language was English. But um, I enforced my English and became better by reading. So I love reading. Reading. Correct. Reading. Any particular type of genre like you like reading? I actually like self-help books, so I've always loved that to begin with. Okay. Okay, self-help, we're gonna talk more about that. All right, what are some of your favorite English words? Uh, enough, and uh, enough encouragement, and um, I will say to be genuine. So these are my three favorite. Powerful, powerful words, powerful words. Okay, do you have a favorite idiom and if so what is it the world is my oyster why does that resonate with you explain that I love that idiom because if you put and you set your mind to anything in the world you can actually get it and I don't believe that anything is not possible everything is possible if you have the right mindset if you try your best and you're persistent so that is why I love that idiom. very appropriate idiom okay your favorite slang word I wouldn't know. I don't use slang. Oh, she's very okay. I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. I'm too proper for yeah, slang. Okay, okay. Alia <laughs> is very proper. Teacher Will is no. Okay, no, no slang. Just, I'm just messing, but I'm just saying that yeah, I, I don't like to use slang to be no honest. No problem. No problem. I can agree. Okay, so listen. Let's say for example that I English is not my native language and I want to learn. What tips or suggestions? I know you talked about reading. I think that's an excellent way. But what other tips and suggestions would you give to someone to be fluent in English? Try and keep on trying. I'm, I'm going to change that word, not say try. Do it, do it, do it. That's the best way. Um, and never underestimate yourself. And keep on, keep on uh, trying to talk to people, be with people. The more you can sit down and, and have conversations with people, that actually helps you to enforce the language. To uh, It actually, in a way, you become happy by dealing with people and that actually makes it resonate in your brain more. I love that resonate, powerful word. Now, Alia, if memory serves me correctly, you are a coach. So for those individuals, what is a coach and why did you become a coach? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my journey. I was one day an architect and I went from building buildings and now what I do is build people. So I changed everything and I always had it in me. So I wanted to resonate with myself. I felt that architecture was a part of me but was not me. And so what I did was I changed my career and literally studied, studied, studied in order to be in line with myself. Mm. Now, what does a life coach do? Uh, I, a life coach, and I'm specialized in the brain and the power of the brain and in reprogram people's mind from childhood all the way up to adulthood. And what does it do? It helps you to change the way you think in order to get the results that you actually want. Um, that could be a relationship, that could be work or career, that could be, uh, say, you're having parental problems with your children. It's, it's a lot of aspects because every kind of person that comes to me has their own things that are stopping them, and what I do is I help them and whatever that stops them so they can fulfill their dreams. Okay, so when we visualize, we must do it frequently. And why is that? It's because we have neurons inside our brains and what happens is that we actually start with a fine line because it's something new. And with repetition, it actually builds up until it becomes a highway. And think about actually building something up from a little strand of hair all the way up trying to build a highway. So you're gonna have to repeat it over and over and over again. And you have to at least do this visualization for five minutes a day. Oh, yeah, I like that. Now, I just have to, here's a question that at least I thought about and other people might have thought about. For some societies or so, some cultures, coaching or self-development or self-help might be a little foreign or not used to it. Why is a coach important to have, do you think? I think a coach is very important because if you don't know the tools and you need the help, 
this is where the coach always helps and it will help you to develop those tools and those skills in order to reach to your potential. Sometimes you want to do something, but if you don't have those tools, you don't have those resources, you're not going to get there. And you know, the best way to help yourself is to admit, I need help. I need help. Good point. I, and you know what? It, I think that for me personally, that not only relates to English, but certainly life. Sometimes people don't know how to ask for help. They don't know where to begin. I love it. I love it. I love it. In your professional opinion, there's a word. What do you think or why do you think people prevent themselves from being successful? I think it's two things. The first one is fear. Fear, 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 fear of change, fear of trying to do something new. And that is normal because the, the brain likes familiar things and it takes a, a time to break a habit. I think the other thing is limiting belief because you forget the power of you, what you can do and what uh, you are capable of doing. These are the two things that literally make people stop fulfilling their dreams. And the third thing is pursuing. People do not go out and pursue the things that they want. So those are the three things. I love it. I'm gonna say a word and I want you to tell me the first thing or things that comes to your mind. Okay. Mindset. Uh, limiting belief. So that's what I would think. Love that. All right, so you're a coach. Well, talk about, say, future projects that are workshops possibly that you might be having coming up. Okay, so I have one in Ramadan that will be actually focused on getting fit. I don't say losing weight because loss with the brain kind of associates with pain, so I don't use that. Um, the second thing that I'm doing is actually a retreat and it will be a detox before Ramadan. That's another one and maybe after Ramadan I have the trying to get pregnant program to help people to conceive because it's all in the mind. You will not, not believe how much uh, health problems, how much things that we have in our life are because of our mindset. Mindset, I like that. And do you run programs or workshops throughout the year? I know that you have those coming up for Ramadan, but do you have any program, future projects coming up in the year? Yes, I do, and I do also one-to-one -one with people, so that's both uh, both things that I do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. Please be honest, it's embarrassing to ask, but I have to ask it. How would you describe... Oh no. Teacher Will. Uh, I would say jolly like Santa Claus, so <laughs> that's what I would say. <laughs> okay. All right. What does the word insight mean to you? Uh, insight to me means be in depth with yourself first. Love yourself. Have a relationship with yourself first. Know who you are. Because if you are in tune with yourself, you're in tune with everybody else. So you're the first person to have the insight with. Alia, trilingual, coach. English speaker, Spanish speaker, Arabic speaker, good cook, good wife, good human being. My last comment or question, any final comments? How do you feel? Any parting last words in terms of English life? It's now your turn. I will say one thing that belief works much powerful than talent. So if you believe in yourself, you will go way further than having talent. So when it comes to English, believe that you can actually do it. Believe that you can actually talk, speak, write it, and you will get there. It is much more important than having the basic foundations because it is what's gonna drive you to get to the end point of learning English. Insight, a deeper appreciation of something or someone. Alia, sir. Thank you very much You're for inviting welcome. me to your home. You're welcome. You are for more welcome. information on Aya, her contact information will be included after the video. More importantly, this is what I want you to do after you watch the video. Ask yourself the question, what did you learn? Insight.